Hello everyone, my name is Jazz Cole, and you're probably watching this because you are aspiring to be bilingual or multilingual as well. As the person speaking 10 languages, it is not always easy, so I basically want to give you my, so to say, tips and advice of if you are trying to acquire a second, third, fourth, and so on, and your goal is to learn two and beyond, if that is your goal. So, we'll get started. <laughs> My first thing is to pace yourself because I did not start out, tr I actually was not trying to be multilingual when I first started. It was just that I mainly just wanted to learn French. Um, it was relevant to my career at one point, you know, in my childhood I was thinking about learning Italian. I had started learning it uh, in through like Google Translate. I was translating phrases off of my parents' computer and uh, repeating them over and over. And um, uh, up until the time I was able to, even now, speaking Italian is more of like, a, it's my fifth language now, but it's pretty much easier to, to decipher because it's similar to the other languages. So pacing yourself, like starting with one and then building into it. I remember I only, I learned in, co in college, I was learning Spanish and German at the same time. Because first of all, I had to have uh, I had to have Spanish because uh, I was living in LA at the time, and a lot of people that I that was in my environment were speaking Spanish, and I wanted to understand. I had a roommate in college who was from Mexico, so that gave me even more emphasis because Spanish was being spoken in my own apartment. So, and it actually helped me build that connection with that friend who we are actually still in uh, contact today. So. I had to, like I said, I had to pace myself and even with German that was because I also had another friend who was from Germany and I wanted to learn because I found out that German was supposedly hard, which so that, that depends um, and I ended up learning it because, I don't know, it was kind of like for fun just to prove that I could learn it and then later on ended up being an au pair in Germany and then basically being in a relationship with a German. So. You never know. It's like you just, it's one of those languages where I just learned it for the purpose of it and then just for the sake of it. And then eventually it just later on found use. So, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. And then, yeah, so basically, yeah, pace yourself. Start with one. And then I, at one point, I started learning two at a, the same time. And I had to be really strategic about how I was learning because it was like, I started out doing like today, I'll work on German. The next day, I'll work on, like, it was alternating days. But then that got confusing because it was just like I would have one language in my head and I wanted to spend more time like, you know, being able to use it. So I would end up doing alternate weeks. It was like one week Spanish, one week German, one week Spanish, one week German. <clears throat> Having to plan out how to um, how to use or learn all these different these different languages. Then the following year, I was like, you know what, let's if I can learn two at the same time, let's try three. Um, I wouldn't say that's like the best thing to do, but you know, in the sense it's like, um, you know, basically giving, you know, pacing yourself to where if you're planning, let's like, say you really want to learn how to speak four languages, you gotta pace yourself. You can't really try to learn everything all at once because then your motivation can sometimes go down um, and it will kind of take you a while to kind of get back into the same habit, uh, that same rhythm. Um, the next thing is is finding languages that are related to one another because for me like of course as an English speaker learning French it was they're they're very similar in certain ways um, not in pronunciation but there are certain words that kind of basically will cross over um, just with different pronunciation um, then with Spanish that was very similar to French and so when I decided to learn it it was easier I will just say it's easier to pick up a third language than it is to pick up a second because with a third you have something to go off of um, when then when I started learning German German was similar to English the pronunciation was similar to French so with learning those it was just like okay like I'm ha I'm taking it's taking half the speed or half the time to learn it because I've already have other languages that I already had made connections to. Um, after that, Italian. Italian was bas is basically, it's basically French and Spanish in one language to me. That's what it sounds like. So 
having learned that, uh, or at least learned the overall basics, is that it was like being able to start reading right, right away, being able to understand basically like at least 20% 20, 20 of what I heard from the very beginning. Um, don't quote me on that, but I would just say it was just very easy to start going um, and understanding. Um, I would say por Portuguese was the same way because it is very, very, very similar to Spanish, just um, different pronunciation. And it kind of, the accent kind of sounds like the Spanish version of Canadian French <laughs> to me. So um, being able to make those connections, Dutch is very similar to English and German. But however, there's some cases where it actually is similar to French in terms of like word, like how words are spelled. So that was able, I was able to make that connection there. Uh, Catalan, that was, it literally is French, Spanish, and Italian mashed together, and they said, we're going to call this a language. And it's very much, I feel like it feels more like Latin, like like raw Latin, like, you know, in original Latin, more than any of the other languages, but it was very easy to start reading um, as well in that case. Um, Frisian, it's the second official language in the Netherlands, so being able to like when I took an intro course on that I'm not fluent I just learned it because I was curious so I wouldn't say I'm like fluent in Frisian but um, reading and understanding is not different than understanding Dutch because it is a language spoken in that same country same thing with Catalan and Spanish because of the fact that they're it's a you know minority languages that are spoken within the country that speaks a larger overall official language um, and then Arabic, I would not say I am fluent at all. I know three words, <laughs> but I know that a lot of uh, roots from like Arabic are actually connected to like Spanish because there were a lot of uh, invasions from the Mediterranean pe Peninsula or Peninsula, Mediterranean Sea um, along the Iberian coast or Iberian Peninsula, which is basically why certain words from Spanish and even French can actually sound very similar to Arabic. So, yeah. <laughs> So I would say pace yourself finding languages and overall like finding ways that, you know, finding languages that relate to each other in certain in, in many different ways. Um, from the next thing I would say is like, are you like, you have to look at the quality of what you're using, like quality resources. So I actually remember I was learning uh, German from this online course. It was called, uh, uh, the company's called DW. It's on our website. You can find all of the resources there. Um, everything's linked at languageandpeople.org slash uh, online courses, um, which is under our research resources tab. And it was really interesting because it was like a movie, which I found on YouTube. And then when I was looking for German courses, like free courses, it basically is produced by the same broadcasting company. It's just that they have like this movie and it, like um, it's, uh, there's three, there's like A1, a2 and then b1 and you would take basically what they would do they would take a like there were like videos of like they would break them down into clips like over like let's say like 18 units and there's like four per unit so it basically take it into like maybe about like 70 parts and so every clip it was like a, it was like a one to two minute video um from this movie from you know start to finish and it would just emphasize something that they talked about and they would have a whole lesson on that from you know and then at the end of that um that film like when you got through all of the lessons connected to every different part you know all of the different clips you would take a um you would take an like a uh like a proof proof test like a like basically like a test just to like a comprehension test, so to say. I don't know what the name is it's escaping me, but it's like basically like a like a proficiency test to show that you understood what you learned throughout this whole the whole course. And it was fun because it's like a video, and I was like addicted because I was just like I want to know what happens next between Nico and Selma, and will he find his bag? You know, um, you know, those were kind of the things that were um, that really interested me. And DW has a lot of other online courses to learn in German as well that are really interactive, where you get to watch videos and like learn culture and all these different things. Um, you know, I remember there was a, there's a course that's on Fun MOOC. I actually have it listed on our website as well, under online courses, but they teach French. There's, this, this is a whole website that is massive open online courses with everything you really want to learn in life, whatever. And it's produced by colleges and they actually will teach you anything you want to learn in the language. And uh, there's one that was like, uh, where it was teaching, it was called um, Vivre en France. 
Um, it's produced by L'Alliance Française, which is a very big uh, organization that actually teaches French in general, um, that teaches French um, in France. So if you are looking at taking courses, Alliance Française is actually very good. Um, and so they have this very interactive course. There's all these quizzes. It's like all these different videos from like, um, like about culture. And they would ask you all these questions and they would teach you pronunciation. They would teach you everything, but it was just like the whole course is um, called Living in France. And it was a, for students who are at a B1 level or anyone who wants to challenge themselves at a B1 level. And it was just so interactive and I loved it. So that basically what I will say is, you know, finding resources that are going to get you excited. Um, like even like one of the things that if you've seen our previous video, um, Chatterbug Streams um, is a very good uh, app to actually uh, to actually use. Um, I did a demo on that as well. And that is a really great resource because you're actually able to watch like live videos or like the longest one will be like maybe about 20 something minutes depends on the subject but basically they'll teach you something and it's like culture it's like depending on what level you're you select you can basically be a part of live streams and they'll have quizzes um live quizzes and then there's also study groups so you can actually get included in like in, in groups where they're actually learning it as well with you and it's really fun so it's always great to learn a language and also be interacting with people um, and scheduling time around your calendar. I mean, one of the things this is you want to have, you want to prep your environment to where you're able to make it in, like, inevitable. Like, you know, like with Chatterbug Streams, they send me notifications saying, Luana is going live with a, uh, um, a, like a quick lesson on whatever the topic is. And these are not just like learn the language, it's like learn the culture and then they talk about other things, you know. So, you know, those notifications help me first thing in the morning or you know, whatever, because it's also on Central European time. <laughs> so like scheduling time um, in your calendar where there's notifications, Google Calendar is my best friend because I schedule everything in there. I schedule when I pay my bills. I schedule when I'm spending time with my mom. I spend time, I schedule like, you know, all of everything, um, even my tutoring sessions, everything work and personal so that it all is visually, I'm able to visually see where that falls. Um, you know, so like I said, just making sure that there's a plan involved in terms of like scheduling it in your calendar when you have free time and being able to stick with it. Um, I would just say, because again, being multilingual, it's a lifelong effort because you're not just learning this language and then it's done, you're learning it and then you're constantly having to maintain it because I have not spoken Spanish since I last was in Los Angeles. So, and I've been at home, working at home for most of the time. So it is a language that I don't use as much. So it gets kind of rusty. Um, I can pick it back up because I, you know, I don't believe that people really forget, you know, what they've learned. It's just that you have to, it takes time to jog your memory, um, you know. So like I'm telling you, if I don't, if I don't see a person for, for like way too long, I'll forget their name. I, I'm, I'm not even kidding. There are people where I'm like, oh, what is that name, person's name again? I like, I knew it. I knew their name and I don't know their name. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so remember that. Um, also stay curious because when you're curious and you want to learn certain things, it actually will make you, it makes it easier to learn. Like I was saying, like I learned all these different languages because I was curious, except for French and, and Italian. Um, those weren't relevant to my careers, but you know, like, like I was saying with, with, you know, Spanish, I wanted to know what people were saying around me. I didn't want to be, you know, excluded to understanding what was going on. So in that emphasis is, you know, in emphasizing that is, you know, I was curious enough because I wanted to know what people were saying. Um, like I said, German, I learned it because I just was like, people say, like, this guy from Germany at my church just said that German was hard. And I'm like, well, show me, like, I'm gonna figure this out, you know? And then also lurking at other languages. Like I was, I ended up learning Dutch because I wanted to see how similar it was to German. And it turns out I'm actually looking at a college for, uh, at a university for, um, um, for possibly getting my master's in uh, the 2024 that is based in Belgium in the Dutch speaking part. So you never really know when you're gonna have use for things. So like having that curiosity, because then later on, I just feel like, for me, I believe in God, but I feel like, you know, God, the universe, whatever you believe in can actually find opportunities that bring that to you, um, to use it. Yeah. And so even lastly, you know, from 
transitioning into that point is, you know, looking for ways that language can serve you. Because like I said, I learned Dutch out of curiosity and I'm looking at something, you know, like I said, like I just said, looking at a university that's in a Dutch speaking area. So <laughs> you really never know. So actively, like when you learn a language, don't just think, oh, I just want to learn it to be cool, you know, because it's cool. Find ways to learn it so that it can serve you. Because when it serves you, you have more reason and more motivation to actually keep using it. And as of this summer, we have our Learn As You Go program. So that will actually be our, that is our annual summer fundraiser that is raising money for study abroad programs. So if you would like to support, visit languageandpeople.org slash L-A-Y-G. Until next time.